In Eastern Kentucky, back in 1938, rumors of a killer ghost echoed through Pulaski County. While no one had ever laid eyes on this malevolent spirit, it was said to leave behind a dangerous curse, claiming five lives in a manner so similar that it defied all logical explanations. I'm Dave Wilkins, and this is Hometown Ghost Stories, The Cursed Grave of the Chain Strangler. Carl Pruitt was known around town for being a relatively normal guy with a normal job and a wife who he deeply cared for. As far as Carl was concerned, his marriage was healthy and he was happy with where his life had taken him up to this point. But that all ended one day in 1938 when he came home to find an unfamiliar vehicle sitting in his driveway. He went into his house and found his wife in bed with another man. Enraged, Carl attacked the man but he managed to escape through an open window. Carl immediately redirected his anger towards his wife, knocked her to the ground, grabbed the chain, and proceeded to strangle her to death. After a few moments, Carl realized the severity of what he had just done and took his own life. The story doesn't end here, however. This is just where it starts to get weird. Carl's wife's parents refused to allow Carl's body to be buried anywhere near their daughter, and most of the county agreed. So Carl's body was buried in an entirely different cemetery on the other side of town. Some believe this angered the spirit of Carl Pruitt as people began to notice strange things happening around his gravesite. Patches of dead grass appeared around his headstone, resembling the shape of a chain, the same type of chain that Carl used to murder his wife. The story of the murder-suicide shocked the small county, and more and more people began to visit Carl's gravesite to see the phenomenon. One night, a group of kids rode their bike out to the cemetery. One boy, James Collins, the ringleader of the group, threw a rock at the grave in an attempt to show off to his friends. The rock struck the grave, knocking a chunk out of it. They all cheered and mounted their bikes. As they rode off, James lost control of his bike, tumbling over the handlebars. In a bizarre series of events, he got tangled up with the bike and the chain wrapped around his neck, strangling him to death. The town was shocked by this freak accident, but even more so when they went out to inspect the grave and found that no chunk was missing, the grave stood in pristine condition. James Collins' mother was obviously distraught over the death of her son, and less than a month after the incident, she ventured out to the cemetery to destroy Carl Pruitt's grave. Wielding a small hand axe, she smashed the stone to pieces. Some people living near the cemetery later claimed that they heard the sound of metal on rock as Miss Collins smashed the gravestone to pieces. The next day, she was hanging laundry from a clothesline made of small link chain. Somehow, she managed to slip, her neck becoming entangled in the chain. She thrashed and twisted, struggling to free herself, but to no avail. She was strangled to death. But at least she was able to destroy the tombstone before her death, right? Wrong. When townspeople went out to the gravesite, they again found it untouched in pristine condition. News of the two mysterious deaths spread like wildfire, and it became the talk of not just the county, but pretty much the whole state. A short time later, a local farmer and three members of his family were driving a wagon past the cemetery. The farmer began talking about the supposed ghost of Carl Pruitt and in a fit of bravado, pulled his revolver and fired multiple shots at the headstone, blasting chunks from out of it. The sudden gunfire caused the horses to panic and run, pulling the wagon at an unsafe speed. The farmer tried to reel them in, but was unable to. The wagon overturned, throwing the family from the bench. The farmer, however, hung on to the reins as it overturned. The man tried to avoid the hulking mass from coming down on top of him, but in doing so, got entangled in the trace chains and the tugging motion from the horses snapped his neck, killing him instantly. The local residents were now convinced of the fact that the grave marker was cursed. Things got so bad that the local congressman was contacted and two police officers were sent out to the cemetery to investigate the stories. When they arrived at the graveyard, one of the men began to laugh about the stories and made fun of the idea of so-called ghosts and curses. Regardless, they took several photos of the stone and then left to go to talk with the witnesses to the events surrounding it. 
As they were driving away, the mocking officer glanced in the rearview mirror and noticed a bright light coming from the direction of the cemetery. At first, he thought it was just a reflection, but it began closing in on them. The officers panicked and began to speed up. The light kept its pace, and the officers eventually lost control of the vehicle, crashing into a fence wedged between two posts. The officer on the passenger side was thrown from the vehicle, suffering only minor injuries, but the driver was found decapitated by the chain that connected the two fence posts. After the latest death, the people of the county were terrified and avoided the grave altogether. That is, all but one man. Arthur Lewis dared to go out to the cemetery and prove that the stories were just legend and that there was no curse. One evening, after telling his wife what he had planned to do, he headed out to the cemetery and dismantled the grave with a hammer and chisel. The sounds of destruction rang through the air, and once again, neighbors to the cemetery claimed they heard the sound of the stone breaking. They also heard the ear-piercing scream that cut through the air following the abrupt cease to the banging. Several neighbors grabbed lanterns and ran to the scene to see what happened. They found Arthur's dead body with the long chain used to close the cemetery gate wrapped around his neck. Frozen on his face was an expression of abject terror, and despite the sounds of crashing stone that echoed through the air that night, Carl Pruitt's headstone stood untouched in the moonlight. After the most recent death, the bodies in the cemetery were relocated to different sites, severing ties with the unusual events. As residents gradually moved away, the once prominent burial ground slipped into oblivion. With Pruitt's grave abandoned due to the absence of caretakers, neglect took hold, transforming it into a tangled mess of overgrown weeds. The year 1958 spelled the final chapter for the site as a strip mining operation obliterated any remnants of the past and the perplexing chain-linked deaths that claimed the lives of five innocent victims remained forever unexplained. going on ladies and gentlemen welcome into hometown ghost stories curse possessions today we are talking about a haunted grave um headstone stone. gravestone and a chain and and a lot of people dying so i am jesse wilkins i'm joined by rob coakley hello rob does your chain hang low and dave <laughs> what's up welcome in so that is a that is a wild story that is our worst intro ever we're yeah, gonna keep it, but that is our worst intro. <laughs> Going back to the to the one before this one, I don't like that one. So, anyways, uh, we're I think we're better at these when we just go live and we just you know if yeah. we have an audience. But well, we have to perform. That's true. We're, like we're 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 stage actors, right? There's movie actors and there's stage actors, and we get are over, get a, get over yourself. No, we are stage we're actors. Podcast I'm, hosts. No, we are performers. We are artists. And our art is performing live in the theater. In the theater. It boggles the my mind that people actually listen to our show. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we're lowly podcast hosts we're talking about ghosts and curses. And today we're talking about a pretty messed up curse. Mm. This one, when you when you explain the first scenario of not not the origin story, but the first death tied to it, I was like, "Ooh, wow, that's crazy!" And then they just kept happening over and over and over and over. And I'm like, "Damn, this story." doesn't end people don't learn just don't do it don't ruin this gravestone <laughs> i know stop it as a general rule i think that you can say don't desecrate a gravestone even if you think it's a bad person we saw this with bathsheba sherman from the conjuring episode and people were like she was a horrible witch who murdered a child we must desecrate her tombstone turns out she wasn't so don't do that <laughs> just don't do it let the dead be she might have killed a baby she do, might we, have the baby. do we want to talk about the other curse that's going on right now? Yes. And it's 
the curse of our camera heights right now because it is throwing me off <laughs> that Jesse has presented himself as eight feet tall. <laughs> and then we just kind of diagonally slope down here. Mm. It's just real weird. Yeah, it's my cross to bear my whole life. I've been called tall Jesse. Yes. <laughs> I just can't even can't even position a webcam to get rid of that uh, that stigma. So I remember this one time I was in London and we went to go see the Harry Potter play. Mm -hmm. And the tallest person in the world sat in front of me the whole time. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. And not only that, it was the tallest couple in the world. So his tall wife was sitting next to my wife and three hours. I'm sorry. Yeah, I sitting in front of her. <laughs> it's three hours bizarre out. seating arrangement, I can imagine. <laughs> Old theater. So this is before they so they, finally they caught on to like, hey, tall people go to see these things too. And they started staggering staggering the seats after a while where you have one row and then the next row is like you know slightly off mm, yeah you know so basically if you're sitting behind a tall person doesn't really matter yeah they didn't figure it out with this theater super old theater but three hour show just sitting here clocked to the side the whole time just trying to actually see the show and then we're like it's fine we have a two hour break and then we go back for another three hour show because it was part one and part two we bought tickets for both and of course the same couple were sitting in the same seats again we had tall people in front of us again so I cursed with the same couple, same couple. Yeah. That's two shows in a row. Same. This is, this is the real curse possession. Mm -hmm. of the this is a curse. This is a curse. So I'm, and isn't it called like the curse child, the, the play? It was, it was, <laughs> it had nothing to do with the story. It actually just had to do with my seat. Yeah. Cause I knew that I, despite how tall I am on this webcam, they knew that I actually have the height of a child and this was the curse as we sit <laughs> behind tall people. So this play that'll pretty much do it. Thank you, guys for, thank you guys for listening. We explained this one fully. I think it's debunked. Anyways, this story is, is like I said, it's, it's nuts and it just keeps going and going and going. Oh, it, here's, here's a fun little tidbit. It's still going. I'm not done telling it. Actually. I was actually researching some of this cause I went back and was like, this is too crazy. So I want to find out if these people exist. Unlike other cursed possessions we've done in the past that frustrated me that were like real fantastical they were where there were no names attached this one actually had names attached to it and carl pruitt was a real guy and i didn't i didn't find anything on his death but other people who have researched it found records of his death so i guess like second second tier it's called sources sources right yeah, yeah. so so he was real and you had james collins the kid on the bike he was real he i assume had a mother and then there was <laughs> Arthur Lewis. So those are the three names. Detective work. I assume yes. he had a mother. Yes. Uh, so there's three, technically four names actually tied to this one. And they were real people. And they, I, I couldn't verify their actual deaths. This was the 1930s. So it's kind of like in that like area where the record keeping wasn't obviously as good as it is now, but this also wasn't, you know, the 1800s, 1700s. So and what state was this in? Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Everyone in Kentucky is still illiterate. Here's a weird thing. One thing that can't be verified is the county, the name of that county. People say they can't find any record of that county existing, which I think is kind of weird. So I didn't look too much far into it. So if you live in, I think it's Pulaski County, and you're like, what do you mean, Dave? I am here. It exists. I apologize. So, uh, so the story sort of ended, right, when the excavation company came in and removed all of the... The, the entire graves. county, apparently. <laughs> the entire <laughs> county from existence just got rid of it <laughs> so what happened was the cemetery be before they excavated it the cemetery became overgrown and most of the families who had loved ones buried there had exhumed the bodies and moved them somewhere else because they knew the cemetery was getting bulldozed for whatever ridiculous reason like if it's overgrown just hire a landscaping company and have to destroy the whole thing i've seen but videos they could definitely get this done yeah, yeah. I, I know you, you have those uh, those time lapse <laughs> landscape <laughs> videos that you love. But uh, so all the most of the bodies were exhumed and relocated. Carl Pruitt was not one of them, not a real popular guy. And then after the cemetery was excavated, one story says that a collector managed to acquire Carl's headstone. So he was somebody who collected things like this. And he was found dead, strangled from an erotic auto asphyxiation gone wrong many year, a few years after he had acquired the headstone or gone to right gone to right <laughs> and then the, the gravestone went into the hands of another collector who ended up killing himself by hanging himself 
So, and now nobody knows where it currently is. Hmm. So there's, so here we I gotta was, get it. We gotta get our hands on it. I don't think I want this one. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably better to play it safe. It seems like, I don't know. All I can think about now is that Rob had brought up that he's seen videos about this and time-lapse videos. Now, here I am just racking my brain. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, wow, Rob's a sick fuck. He watches time-lapse videos of graveyards getting bulldozed and bodies being excavated. <laughs> and then I thought more about it. I'm like, no, he's talking about time-lapsed landscape videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which Literally I just... also have watched all of those because I can't stop watching time-lapse landscape videos. Meanwhile, I'm sitting inside my house watching this while I have leaves and unkempt lawn outside. <laughs> I could be outside doing that, but instead I'm just watching somebody else on the internet do it. I'm like, wow, he's doing a great job. <laughs> he does so good. It's so satisfying. This is this is why I hate being in my 30s. It would probably be more satisfying if my lawn also looked good outside, <laughs> but I'm just inside like a fucking vegetable. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> that looks great. <laughs> But but in fairness, I am now going to look for time lapse videos of graveyards getting destroyed. So it does sound pretty exciting. Balance it does sound pretty yeah. exciting. Time lapse videos of pressure washing also very satisfying to watch. Uh, yeah. um, Chris from Haunted American History uh, put me on to carpets being cleaned. Oh yeah, those are good too. So oh, I've seen those ones. Yeah, you know what else mm. might be cool to watch would be like the cursed child play. <laughs> giant <laughs> fucking huge person i had hagrid in front of me slender like, man just <laughs> <laughs> you should be, there should be like a height thing and you should have to like put it in so they can put all the tall people towards the back and then stagger it that's called segregation <laughs> it kind of it kind of is but i mean us short people we've been discriminated long enough <laughs> you know look what i had to do with my webcam just to feel better about myself that's true that's yeah. very true now this curse is concerning and it's it's one of those ones where I just want to punch myself in the face the whole time. Like, dude, just stop fucking with this guy's grave. Like, like just <laughs> don't do it, you idiot. And every single one of them just keeps getting strangled by a chain. But what's interesting about it and what's wild is that it's all different ways of dying by chain, right? So you have the first kid who gets all tangled up in his bike and the, the bike chain ends up around his neck. I don't even... I racking my brain trying to think of how the bike could have flipped over and that chain ended up around his neck and i cannot imagine a scenario where that could have happened so it's i mean it's crazy and then well, if you flip the over the handlebars you somersault with the bike the bike goes over if you keep if he was rolling down a hill or something it could have happened i guess well, those bike chains are pretty tight though i don't know i also don't know what a bike from the 1930s really would have looked like probably had a chain Pretty sure that's how they've always worked. Wooden chain. I wasn't chain. saying it. Didn't have wooden steel. chain. <laughs> wasn't saying it wouldn't have a chain. I was just saying they probably don't look like the bikes that I'm picturing in my head. The fuck do you think they look like? It's the they... chains all intertwined by jungle twine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you Still think a bike look like? You haven't seen pictures of bikes from the 1930s? I just keep picturing the one with the really big wheel on the front oh, and the really small wheel on the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would I have to have got... a different kind of chain. <laughs> yeah, it had could have gotten caught right in that big old wheel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't get that image out of my head now. That's hilarious. Nope. But yes, yeah, so you had that one, and then a, do some AI images on that for a little bit. Yeah, uh, I kind of want to do that. <laughs> Gonna get ourselves banned for another know, AI generating site. <laughs> it's um, hard putting together these absolutely twisted episodes and trying to use <laughs> AI. They're like, "Wow, this sick fuck needs to get out of his basement." And <laughs> FBI needs to immediately go check his hard drive. They're like, no, we're we'll just trying to make a ghost show. Well, you started making a point here about the different ways people were dying by the chains. And so you had that one, which was the first one. And then that was immediately followed by the boy's mother, who this is one of the more ridiculous ones, I think, that she was doing laundry and she has chains for clotheslines, which I don't know if that was a thing or not. But she gets her neck tangled in the clothesline. That seems weird. Yeah, this one seems made up. That, that was how it first struck me. I know that his mother existed, right? Yeah. So she she could have died from this. I feel like this story, maybe she did. Maybe she did get tangled up in her clothesline. That's just so hard to picture that without thinking like that's the most Three Stooges situation ever. Like, <laughs> would you, I, I, mean, I would imagine she stepped in a bucket, got the bucket stuck to her foot, rolled over, got all tangled in the line, flipped over. 
and then the thing wrapped around her neck. I don't see it being a chain, though. I feel like the, the chain element was probably added just to spice up the story. That sound, that's what I was going to say. It sounds like that was a detail that was backfilled mm. to kind of add to the to the legend. And this story is mostly folklore. There's no like documented record of this exact story happening aside from all the online stories about it that you can find. So basically it exists in folklore, but it could, uh, it could have been like a medical thing too. Maybe she had a, like a stroke or a heart attack and just fell mm-hmm. onto the clothesline. And maybe yep. that's how she choked. Cause she wasn't able to, to get True. off of it. You know what I mean? So that could have been the other True. way that happened, but for the sake of conversation and arguments, let's just take this at face value for now. And then we can, you know, pick it apart after. So you have that one, you have the clothesline death. Then you have the, what was the third one? Was the third one the police? We know you're no, no, the third one was dancing. The third one was uh, the guy. This one was kind of crazy too. The guy who was on the, the horse and wagon. Oh yeah, the horse and wagon one. Who was going by and just decided to open fire on this grave. <laughs> like, I mean, as you do. What are you, what are you trying to prove? <laughs> It's the I most often, re- the most Red Dead Redemption scene ever. I know. <laughs> I often take Gotham on walks to the cemetery and just start blind firing at any gravestone I can find. Yes, don't. <laughs> do this. Don't do this. You've been warned. So this one makes more sense, right? So aside from the fact that it's completely ridiculous to behave like that, it <laughs> spooks the horses, and the horses are animals that get spooked pretty easily. You start firing a gun behind them, unprovoked. They freak out. They start pulling this wagon down the hill and it turns over and it's and he gets his neck stuck in the trace chains. And that that sounds like something that makes a lot more sense than getting tangled up on clothesline. Mm. Absolutely. I could see this one. It seemed like a scene out of a movie. This whole thing seems like a a final movie, destination, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like with a very specific very theme. specific um theme. Theme, right? Right. The chain. So then you have the police officers who go and they take pictures of the grave and the one who's making fun of it ends up driving the cruiser away from the cemetery and they see that weird light in the rear view. So this one's the story is a little bit different from the other four because they get he gets chased out of the, the cemetery by this light and it causes them to run off the road and he gets decapitated by the chain that was holding the fence together that they crashed into. Mm-hmm. Another one that I think is pretty believable. It is, and this is probably where you get your one and only potential ghost sighting. So this strange ball of light that's following him seems like it's almost like the angry spirit, like, hey, what'd you say about my grave? And just chase him down and uh, causes the accident. Kind of relates to quite a few curse possessions, actually. You go back to Annabelle with the whole taunting of the curse and then car accident accident leading to death. Busby chair as well and uh, several others. Yeah, that, that we've dealt with that. I think Robert the doll had some car accidents involved with it as well. Lots, so, I mean, multiple, multiple car accidents with curse possessions. Yeah, 100%. it seems to be a recurring situation. And then the last one was the guy Arthur Lewis who decided that he was just going to smash this this stone to pieces as if he didn't like. Did you only read like half the story? Did you? Yeah, <laughs> you, you missed the part where these are these people desecrating the tomb. So he does that and. People literally heard him smashing it and they heard him scream and die. And when they found him, they found his they found him all wrapped up in the, the cemetery gate chain. So very consistent. This could have been a dark mystery episode. I was back and forth on whether I wanted to make it dark mystery or cursed possession. The reason I went with cursed possession was the detail that the that the stone kept getting broken up and then basically just coming back to life that's a, not the best way to put it <laughs> but you know it gets put back together it, gets put back it together. Seems, that, seems that it was never touched in the first place it definitely has cursed possession vibes to it, it the the whole grave i mean the, the most compelling part of this isn't just the deaths right that's the most dangerous part of this but it's the fact that even if you smash this thing up then you die then all of a sudden the grave is is in perfect condition again it's such a weird element i do wonder if so I would assume that the first story with the boy riding his bike with his gang of Stranger Things buddies, when mm-hmm. they threw a rock at it and they all cheered, first of all, kind of arm that this guy have threw a rock and just broke a damn gravestone. That's that kid should have played baseball. Maybe he would have. Maybe, but he died. 
So that, so I would assume with that story, there are wit there were the witnesses, and they mm -hmm. must have seen the fact that he threw the rock and broke a chip off of the gravestone or whatever. And then when they got back, it was all perfectly fine. And then you had the guy shot at it. Like no matter what you do, to this thing, it That's seems bad. to uh, put itself back together. Two people blasted it to pieces mm. with tools. So that that was weird too. The, so the on the on the other side of this, whereas you know you have a what seems to be a curse. If it's not a curse, it seems like it could be a vengeful spirit. So kind of reminded me of a revenant. So you have a, a revenant. If you don't know what that is, you can subscribe on Patreon and check out our history of ghosts. Jesse did an episode on revenant revenants. And these are basically spirits that are angry and seeking revenge for something that they were wronged for. So in this instance, obviously, this man died very bitter and in a very dark place, and he could have a vengeful spirit. The spirit also could be mad that he was not buried with his family and he was buried separate from his family. And that could be the mm. tide of the gravestone. So this could have been an interesting dark mystery angle also, but it was just that detail about the gravestone being put back together mysteriously that had me leaning towards cursed possession. Yeah. I, I'd said with cursed possession on this one as well. It could yeah. be a revenant, could be a couple of different things. It's 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 a tough one to call. I mean, I don't know what I would really call the the ghost type, if you will. The revenant seems to be something that is almost like a zombie, and there are no real ghost sightings with this one other than the white light. But definitely seems vengeful, and I mean, not really taking revenge on people that wronged that spirit in life, though. This more so in the afterlife. So it's kind of a unique twist on this whole haunting or the curse altogether. And it's such a strange thing to curse too. You would think if if he was, no, I guess it does add up because he wanted to be buried next to his wife that he killed, right? So right. that's why that the, the headstone would have been cursed. But again, he was dead. He had no idea about the headstone. It's, it's a strange one. I can't really put a finger on it. Yeah, like when would the curse have been placed, right? If a curse has to be performed, right? If we believe in curses and how they're, how their legend is kind of fleshed out. Seems like you would have to curse something when when you were alive, like before you die, in theory. That's how I understand from, curses to work. Right. So to, to die and then curse your own tombstone. I mean, it is your... A death curse! Haven't you watched Friday the 13th? It mm -hmm. is your burial it's site, though. So. curse. Well, we've said it multiple times, and we've seen it multiple times, even on cursed possessions, that desecrating grave sites never a good idea. So maybe it has nothing to do with his headstone in particular. Maybe it just has to do with you're desecrating his gravesite. True. And that's uh, him getting revenge for that. It, uh, so I would lean with it being a cursed possession, but it does sound like some of these deaths may, either may have been made up or sensationalized to d just mm -hmm. add to the story. So I think there was something. It sounds like something where things definitely happened and then legend just continued and people just kept adding and adding to it is what I think happened here. Yeah, I agree with you in uh, that there are some some elements of the story that we know are true, like Carl Pruitt, real guy, really died. So, But then it, it, I agree with you. It does seem like a lot of these things were added after the fact. In fairness, if you murder your wife, I don't think that you deserve to be buried next to her. Oh, I agree. 100%. And if the family says, no, nah, get him out of here, then I would absolutely respect that family's wishes. Yeah. But I also, no matter who it is, I'm not desecrating a grave. It's not no. Do it. No. And it's a bad idea for multiple reasons. Number one is it's just kind of a shitty thing to do. Number two, you run the risk of it being cursed and then getting strangled to death by your bike. <laughs> Never thought you'd see that happen, did you? <laughs> you see it all too often. Yeah. Strangled by bike. <laughs> Just classic, classic death in the United States. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's that folding bed. Oh, yes. The folding bed. We still need the folding bed emoji, Jesse. Oh, we do. Yeah, we do. Indeed. That's coming yeah. soon. Anyways, anything else on this one? I uh, So I will lean. If we're taking the story at face value that these things actually happened, I will lean towards the curse being real. Mm -hmm. Well, then you would lean towards every curse being real if you took everything at face value. Um, no, I know. I'm, sa I'm saying if these people actually died in the fashion that we said that they died. Gotcha. Okay. 
then I would say it is absolutely a curse. It sounded yeah. like you were like, if everything we said about this is true, then it's definitely a curse. <laughs> we told yeah, you it's a no curse. Shit. So, <laughs> no <food>. shit. <laughs> so yeah, it is. Um, but I, I lean, I lean that it's, it's probably not real. I don't. I don't. It, but it's so tricky. It's so tricky. I my gut tells me that this is most commit. Real. Commit to something here, Jesse. No. <laughs> That was that was my answer is no. I don't think it's, <laughs> I don't think okay. it's a curse. Rob, you go. I like I said, I think there's some sort of curse here, but I think that a lot of it's just been sensationalized. And we'll never know because unfortunately now it's gone. Right. Right. So unless this gravestone actually does reappear, we're unfortunately we'll never know the actual situation behind it if there is a curse or not. True. And I, I agree with the first half of what you said, Jesse, that if we're taking all of these events at face value, that if they actually did happen, this is the most consistent curse that we've covered by far. You have mm -hmm. five, possibly seven deaths from it. The origin story, he, he strangled his wife with a chain. All these people died by neck wounds from a chain. And that's by far the most consistent curse that we've covered. So if taking everything at face value, it's absolutely a curse. However, I do think this is folklore. This is local legend, something that people tell their kids and gets told at campfires and whatnot. I think this is mostly, like Rob said, sensationalized. Mm -hmm. But like you said, if they are all true, that is uh, the most wild set of circumstances that it, this would be the most valid curse that we ever covered. Let us know what you think. Is it a curse? Is it all made up? And uh, leave it in the comments below. Let us know what you think. Let's thank our patrons real quick. We have Allison V, Blazora. We have Captain Kitty Tibbles has 10 toes on one foot. We have Dakota G, Donnie N, Glitter Tees, Cammy from Washington, Jeannie R, Jennifer P, Joseph S, Lisa J, Mallory K, Bomb and Pops W, Nick, Robert H, Demon King, and Inspires Gaming. Thank you for being our VIPs. For the Warren's Wards, we have allegedly Mike Blake, Kath Q, Chris Connolly, LBPS founder, next HTGS guest. We have DC. We have Don't Look at Me Orphans. We have... Eileen, the curse, Moo Moo wearing happy housewife doll. We have Elizabeth Young, Eugene M. Geography is hard. We have Lily. We have I hate Rob. We have Jake V, Janice G, Mar. We have Papa Squatch, Rachel B. We have Rob Love Subway and the Blue Blood Brewery. We have Sarah Cook. We have Siobhan, not Sharon. Steph A, evil queen of the Church of the Stephanies. We have Stitch Kitten, the other Rachel B. We have Wahini Pirates. We have Nine Portals, Dave and Rob's Nipple nibbles we have al capone <laughs> alicia e we have anthony rob is old as hell t True. arcade hunters we have brandon w we have code colby's other patrons get very confused by our random inside joke names we have crystal quinn we have dave probably would not be able to fall over that railing we have <laughs> friend with a dead owl unasked for ghost stories of the paranormal podcast hooper the hellhound huska castle huggy bear joe r julie s kelly c kiralee j we have let's all Take some nightmare juice. We have Marie R, Mark Twain in the Haunted Grape, Megan S, Mina H, Morgan S, Mariah M. Orphans don't exist just like Rob's family. <laughs> <laughs> Was that one in the last one? No. no. <laughs> Got it. We have Paul from St. Louis. We have Pork. We have Rob Hates Peasants and Orphans. We have Sam from Nepal. We have Sassy Dave eating a fresh mean sub over a railing. We have Sharon V, Solar Flare Soap. We have the majestic dual crowns of Dick King. We have Thick Boy Freddy's allegedly poorly yeeted orphans. We have Wayne C and Fajwa. Lots of bang bang loves Captain Tibbles, who is here for free. Thank you guys so much for being on Patreon. It's always a lot of fun. <laughs> and I just love the idea of new listeners listening to our Patreon list and then never listening to an episode again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for that. Keep the circle small, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that'll pretty much do it for this week. We'll catch you guys back on Tuesday for another live episode of Hometown Ghost Stories. We will see you guys then. Bye. Everybody, Rob from Hometown Ghost Stories here. Wanted to thank you for checking out this piece of side content. If you really liked it, you can head over to Patreon and for as little as $3 a month, you can get access to these a little bit early. Also, we are doing member-only stuff on Patreon, 
such as our History of Ghost series where we talk about like Andreos, Banshees. We let you know where they came from, their origin, some stories associated with them. It's a lot of fun. Until then, if you look over this shoulder here, you can find one of our earlier episodes. And if you look down here, we got another side content episode. Until next time, from Jesse, myself, and I guess even Dave, thanks for watching Hometown Ghost Stories.